I had eight going into winter, eight colonies, and uh, I ended up with four. Well, now you can see there's three because I did lose another one in this spring. A nationwide survey this week found beekeepers across the U.S. lost more than 40 percent of their honeybee colonies since April last year. And in eight states, including Wisconsin, 60 percent of hives have been lost. May sound like a joke to many, but it's more serious than most would understand. Honeybees are dying at a record rate across America. Beekeepers are struggling mightily to stay in business. And the American economy is in jeopardy, as is our food supply. Because one out of every three bites of food we take has a connection to bees and pollinization. It's an issue we can no longer just buzz about and fret over. Our guest is assistant professor of entomology at the University of Maryland and project director at the Bee Informed Partnership, Dr. Dennis Van Engelsdorp. Doctor, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. These numbers are absolutely astounding. More than 40% of the honeybee hives died this past year, the second highest annual loss recorded to date. Is it just as simple as some people say pesticides? It seems like there's got to be more to this. No, we think that there are three major drivers behind colony losses. Um, the number one driver is probably the varroa mite, which are these large parasitic mites, like vampire mites, that suck on the blood of bees and pass on viruses. And we're pretty sure that this is the major cause of winter mortality, especially among small scale beekeepers, those owning 50 or fewer hives. So um, how do we then get, other, uh, okay, I'm sorry, you got two more, go ahead. Yes, the other two drivers are poor nutrition. And we've seen if we look at the Midwest where a lot of commercial beekeepers go to North and South Dakota and Montana, we've seen a lot of land get plowed under to plant corn and soybeans over the last five years because of the price of those commodities. And the third one is pesticides. Both the pesticides beekeepers apply to the hive to control varroa mite and the pesticides farmers are applying and the bees are bringing back to the hive as they forage on crops. What kind of real danger is there to our future food supply? Well, as you said, one in every three bites of food we eat is directly or indirectly pollinated by honeybees. But we don't think we're going to, bees are going to go extinct. What we're really worried about are the large commercial beekeepers they're about 5% of the beekeepers owning 95% of the hive, and they truck their hives around the country to pollinate different crops. If these guys go out of business because of these sustained high levels of loss, then we won't be able to produce the fruits and nuts we do on the scale we do in this country. If we want to continue to produce our own apples and our own almonds, if we want to produce the seed for the vegetable crops we grow in this country, then we need to have a healthy, movable pollination supply. So then how do we turn this around? And I guess seeing as pesticides are at the bottom, poor nutrition with land is something that it's really a tough thing that we have to, that we have to, to work with at the given time because people just buying land and turning it over into homes and so much else. So how about the vampires here? How do, is that really the place we need to start getting rid of these mites? Well, I think, I think it's a complicated problem, and I'm not sure that we weigh pesticides and poor nutrition. Like and for some cases, it's clearly poor nutrition. In some cases, it is pesticides. So that depends on a case-to-case -case basis. But I think that what we have to do is get policy in place that ensures that we leave food for bees in our landscape. And that's both for the backyard homeowner who has some lawn to make sure that we're planting pollinator-friendly material in there, but also the farmer that they make sure that there's some land left over for bees to forage on. We also have a lot of room for wiser use of pesticides. I think that we've seen a lot of people starting to use pesticides as a preventative rather than as a control for a known problem. And we have to get better tools in our toolbox to control varroa mite. While commercial beekeepers are very aggressive about controlling varroa mite, those small scale beekeepers, 60% of them aren't treating for varroa mite. And so we have to get the message out that they need to be treating for varroa mite. What we're worried about is that some of those colonies that are left untreated are dying and the bees and the mites in those colonies in the end stages of collapse are spreading to other beekeepers who do have control practices in place. I got about a minute left here then. How long will it take to turn this around? All these little things that you talk about, getting them in action and actually getting the bee population in America back up to, a, to at least an average again. Well, you're right. And we've been struggling a long time and I think beekeepers are really hurting. And so I think that it's, it's an action we have to take quickly and we have to find things to help beekeepers stay in business. And that requires several different people doing and organizations doing their part. But can we turn this around quickly? Is it within a couple of years if we actually get the action moving? I think that we need, we need to solve this problem. I don't, think we have, I don't think we have an option. We have to solve these problems. But I, again, just 
are we looking at something that can be turned around in a couple of years if we solve the problems? Yes, I mean, I'm hopeful. I mean, I don't know, but I, I certainly am hopeful. I think beekeepers are hopeful by nature. And so I think we're all trying to find ways of doing it. Um, I think that last year's numbers were a real um, surprise in the fact that summer losses were higher than winter losses. And we have to start looking at the causes for there. But remember, for 10 years now, we've been watching winter losses. We've been yep. driving those numbers down a bit. But we have to get after those summer losses. Too. As even you said, imagine if one of every three cows died, the National Guard would be out. That's really a good way to put it as well. Dr. Dennis Van Engelsdorp, I want to thank you so much for joining us. We'll keep following the story. Thanks for your interest. All right, my pleasure. Take care. Coming up next, the need for swift action to end the case of Jokar Zarnaya, telling it like it is on the hard line.